One of the things that holds camp together is cord. You know, you need it for a lot of things. I had to put a stake in that, uh, that canopy over there. And as you know, paracord's like the standard, right? 550 paracord, 550 pounds of tensile strength. Uh, you know, survivalists say you can take it apart and take the sheath off of it and pull out the fibers and make fishing line. I don't know what they do with it, but uh, I just need some cheap cord. So, you know, size is everything on the trailer, and uh, this roll is uh, 250 feet of, para of, uh, of uh, mason twine, braided mason twine, and uh, 50 feet of uh, paracord would be about the same size, so I can just pack tons of this stuff in, uh, in a small volume of, uh, of space. And now uh, that's kind of what I want. It's just utility cord around here. I'm not uh, doing a rappelling down a cliff. And uh, this is uh, braided mason twine. I'll have a link in it. I found some on Amazon. Uh, I usually buy it at Home Depot. And uh, you don't want twisted mason line. Twisted mason line frays. It's terrible stuff. Braided, all you do after you cut it is heat the end and it stays together very well. Now, they don't really give you a tensile strength on this, but I have read it's 80 pounds of tensile strength, which is plenty for what I'm doing with it. And the benefits for me are, it's cheap, and I can get 200, this is $8, this thing. I can get uh, 250 feet, that's a couple of cents a foot. And uh, I don't feel guilty when I have to cut a piece to put it on something. Uh, you know, I'll tie that back together and put it on here. This roll's been around a while. I have lots of knots in it for doing different things. If I need a clothesline, mason twine. I may have another spool of this. I may have 500 feet of this stuff with me. So I've just got gobs of it and I use it all over the place. And I never leave the cord behind. Uh, I take the cord home if I'm not, if I'm done with it and I'm going to trash it. And I cut it up so it doesn't end up in the ocean and whales choking on it or whatever, right? I hope I'm going to go to whale heaven. It comes in a lot of bright colors, you know. <laughs> it will match your outfit, you know. So you want the braided because the twisted will fray apart. Even if you melt the ends, it'll come apart. The braided stuff, um, it doesn't, uh, when you melt the end, it doesn't uh, come apart. Uh, the only weakness with this is it's not abrasion resistant. If you're going to throw it over a branch and you're going to have a lot of weight on it, flexing back and forth and rubbing against something, not the best cord to use. But I don't have that here. I'm just tying stuff out and throwing my clothes over a clothesline. So you don't get confused and uh, come looking for me. I'll have a, a link to the exact product in the comments. It's a rainy day here in camp. It's going to rain all day, uh, on and off. These are the dregs of Hurricane uh, Fred. So uh, I need to charge this uh, Jackery 300. So simple solution. I'm just going to put it in a plastic bag. So Mr. Jackery's happy in his little hut there. I'm out here uh, camping and it's uh, windier than hell. Last night it got down to 8 degrees, and it was quite cold, and uh, I was comfortable and snug in the trailer. Now, I'm totally dependent on solar energy here. You know, I've got these uh, Dokios, they're doing great. I've also got my Jackery system. Now, the Jackeries, I had it in a trailer last night. That's a Jackery 300 over there. I had it in the trailer last night, and I was using it. I drained it down about 25% using my laptop, using my... Uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, charging the phone, all sorts of stuff. You know, I just love those things. Now, that's a luxury for me, the Jackeries. It makes the trip more interesting because I can uh, surf the web and stuff and I can work on my videos. Um, the trailer has a lead acid battery, which is much less affected by the cold. And uh, I took the Jackery out this morning at nine degrees and put it outside to charge and it froze it will not charge those temperatures, and that's a good thing. Uh, if you were to charge it at those temperatures, you would damage the battery. Uh, this is the lithium, rechargeable lithium ions. This is all of them. If you have one of these no-name uh, lithium ion solar charger battery banks, and it does charge below freezing, you're gonna permanently damage it. But Jackery builds in all the protections that you need. Um, it will not charge below freezing, and it will not discharge below 16 degrees Fahrenheit. And those are good things because if you did, you'd damage them more. So, uh, but it's still, I wanted to recharge it. You know, I have this thing here and uh, put it out this morning, wouldn't charge. And I tried to cut a number of different things, but what worked was a miniature greenhouse. I uh, put this plastic tub over it and in about an hour, they got it up to 37 degrees in there, and in about an hour, the uh, Jackery started charging again. This is a Jackery 300, 
and it's charging now at uh, 90 it's like 30 or 40 watts I can't stand up these solar panels because it's so windy they're blowing over so uh, I'll fiddle around with that some more it was charging at 100 watts before so um, this is a great thing for anybody who's going to go out camping with one of these jackeries in sub-zero weather you know really cold weather I don't know how cold this would be good for but uh, in here I put in a uh, a uh, high low thermometer and it says it got up to 44 degrees in there when I put it in there it was 29 degrees so one solar panel is putting out six watts I'm gonna use the Y connector to double that up so I can use two solar panels on here so now I'm getting 11 watts uh, I strongly suggest if you have one of these uh, Y you know if you have a couple of, mo of solar panels like this they don't have to be jackeries whatever ones you've got uh, make a Y connector uh, it's just a parallel connection and uh, this one I got from Jackery, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. It came with a 1000 in my case, it has an Anderson connector on this side. And it puts, uh, the, both panels get piped into the, uh, the Jackery. So let me put this in a plastic bag so it'll be rainproof. Since I'm commonly doing my dishes in cold water, uh, I do heat up some water once in a while. But uh, grease is a big problem, oil and grease are a big problem. So I carry a small shaker of uh, baking soda and uh, I sprinkle that on whatever it is that I'm cleaning, a liberal amount, and scrub it down with that. That has an abrasive action, and it's a natural grease cutter, and it's non-toxic. Um, you can eat this stuff. I don't recommend you eating it, but it's non-poisonous, and uh, it, uh, it does quite a good job at cutting grease, even in cold water. You know, Bonner's is, uh, is a good soap, but uh, it's not the greatest cold water soap. <laughs> And it's not the greatest of cutting grease. So this combo seems to work out okay uh, for me. I've tried Dawn. I've tried a lot of other soaps, but I ended up with these. I'm up at about 1,500 feet elevation, and uh, it's uh, pretty cool. It's 41 here and breezy. Uh, it's supposed to maybe go down into the 20s tonight. So I put in a, uh, a Reflexit uh, closure for the pass-through. And, uh, you know, that cuts off my access to the back from the inside of the trailer. But uh, I'll just set up differently tonight. And I want to see if this provides more warmth uh, as an experiment. I saw these uh, folding buckets on Amazon. And uh, they got mixed reviews. You know, some people love them. Some people hate them. Uh, some people have uh, unrealistic expectations. Other ones, uh, it's serving them pretty good. So uh, I wanted to test them. I read the reviews on Amazon, and they were kind of mixed. You know, good and bad. Some people said they leak. Some people said when you pick it up, it's, you know, it, it, it loses half the water. Uh, other people said they were great. You know, the usual uh, <laughs> Amazon review, which by the way, I get um, several emails a week to do Amazon reviews. They'll give me the products for free if I review them. And uh, I never do it. Whether you like these or not is really a use case kind of a thing, what you're gonna do with it. This is a three gallon one. I think this is a six gallon one. And, uh, this is like six dollars this is about eight dollars i'll have links in the bottom you know there's plenty of them to choose from on amazon but uh this one depends what you're doing with it some of the complaints were uh that when you pick it up it spills lots of water and i can see both sides of that argument uh, one complaint was it didn't hold water so let's test both of those now it's uh definitely holding water uh, I have not left it like overnight or something like that to see if any is going to seep out of it, but it does. The other complaint somebody had was that it would collapse when you uh, when you picked it up. And a little bit of water did spill out of it. There's about an inch from the top on this thing. Now, one of the challenges with this is it's going to be to pour your water. Uh, you're going to have to be very careful and, uh, and pour it in a way that's... Uh, that's not going to spill too much for you. So if you're going to depend on a bucket like this, you might want to practice with it first. It appears to be a uh, vinyl, plastic vinyl. I'm sure it will stiffen in cold weather, but it uh, it does fold up quite small. And uh, you can stuff this in a lot of places. And I know a lot of people are thinking, telling me where to stuff it. So uh, not bad. Six bucks. I can't beat it, you know. So if you need to haul some water, or you're an occasional water user you know maybe a uh, pretty good solution uh this one six gallon let's give it the old uh spill test this one's about a little less than an inch from the top maybe a half an inch and uh i can move it 
I do not see any dripping, but I have not checked for seepage, which somebody said the seams might seep a little bit. So if you're in a desert and your life depends on water, maybe this is not it. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that they, uh, they do not have uh, lids on them, which is to be expected, uh, but it's uh, pretty good. I think if you need to go to a stream or a water source, fill up some water and lug it back to your trailer, you, know, you put your funnel in here and fill it up, uh, I think this would do the job, but let's give it the spill test. A little heavier, a little harder to handle. I'll try it from the side. I want to try and get a nice uh, stream that I can give, a controlled stream, and uh, I can get it somewhat controlled. So. Only you know if this is going to be useful for you. So I'm turning to my viewers for some help on this. I need some help. Uh, this uh, carpet that I use, all the carpets I use, they, um, they uh, are gentle on the lawn. Uh, this lawn here, I had a carpet on it for five days, continuous, and uh, the lawn isn't, you know, it's going to come back just fine. It's, it shows, but in a day or two, this will be gone. And uh, that's the way it is with these carpets. But uh, where I put these black solar panels, they're black nylon, it doesn't really breathe. These carpets breathe. So when I put these uh, solar panels down, uh, it gets quite hot uh, and it, uh, it, it damages the grass here. Now this is going to come back uh, pretty quickly, but uh, I'd rather not leave a pockmarked uh, uh, mark on this field. Uh, you know, someone will be here after me camping for sure, and I'd rather leave it uh, the way I found it. So uh, if you have some ideas, uh, let me know. Uh, you know, keep in mind when you come up with a suggestion, it's got to be practical because my car is already full. I can't bring like a lot of lumber or something and build a, you know, a platform for this uh, thing. But uh, I'm going to try moving the solar panels daily and see if that helps a bit. And, uh, but it just gets hot with that solar panel. You know, it's black nylon and it's absorbing sun. So it uh, creates a problem. So uh, any uh, creative solutions are appreciated. Uh, practical ones that I can actually implement, not crazy ones, you know, how about some balloons to float those solar panels? I get that kind of stuff. So uh, your help is appreciated. There's other marks here from other people. These are not from me, but uh, I would like to uh, leave the field the way I found it. I'm uh, sure I said it before, but it's worth repeating. This angled funnel is a must have. Uh, you know, you can put a filter in there. I've got fresh water here, which is uh, clean, so I'm not worried about it, but um, really is a uh, an important thing to have when the thirster the trailer is thirsty had a really heavy duty rainstorm last night we got several inches of rain and uh, this shelter did great um, you know you have to uh, lower your expectations on what dry means I had water running down the walls a little bit but uh, overall the thing is great and uh, pretty happy with it it wasn't very windy last night. The winds only hit about 20 miles an hour, so it, uh, it held up very well. I didn't even stake it down, and uh, everything inside was dry this morning. Anything near the walls was a little wet, like I had some tables near the walls. They were a little bit wet. Uh, nothing that I couldn't handle. All my gear is waterproof anyway, so, uh, uh, but it was uh, great to have this shelter and just sit out here, and over at this uh, other REI Alco shelter, <laughs> that was great just sitting outside in the teeming rainstorm. It was fabulous temperature was 77 and it was just a perfect night to be uh, witnessing a rainstorm. I'm using a wheel lock for my trailer just to keep the honest people uh, honest and uh, you'll notice that a lot of uh, dirt that uh, a lot of when it rains out the rain falls off the trailer hits the ground and the dirt bounces back up on the uh, lock and I'm always worried about the uh, the lock jamming you know if I can't get the uh, the key in here <laughs> Uh, and I started to feel grit in there uh, after a rainstorm once. So what I did was I just got a uh, plastic film can. You remember those 35 millimeter film cans? And I modified it just to slip over here so it keeps the dirt out. And uh, at least in my mind, it, uh, the lock is clean when I uh, put a key in there, even after rain. It would be a bit of a disaster for me if I couldn't get the lock off. I'm always looking for a, uh, a small compact tripod that I can take with me hiking, and I found a great one recently. I'm really impressed with it. 
It's only 13 inches long when it's folded up, and it uh, can support, I think, four pounds. Um, and uh, it deploys pretty quickly. And it has a couple of features that I really like. Now, this only goes up to 40 something inches, which is uh, not a full size tripod, uh, you know, at eye level or anything. But um, what it can do that I like is uh, it has a, uh, a removable plate. So you can attach this to your camera and quick mount it on here. It also allows you to get down to a very low angle. Slick in their, uh, in their wisdom, they made this center column so you can unscrew it and uh, just have this stub here. A lot of other tripods I have you have to carry a separate stub so when you open the legs, when you spread the legs to, uh, to get it to lay down, uh, low to the ground, you uh, have to switch to a different stud, which I don't like. Uh, this one though, I love this. Uh, I'll do it now. So the center column just breaks in two, and this comes right off. Now I've got a short stud in here, and I'll uh, take out the longer column. And you can reverse this column if you want to do like a top-down shot too. And it all happens pretty easily. So let me get this into low mode to show it to you. Now I can lay this all the way down and uh, it gets uh, quite low, which is uh, a nice feature for macro photography. I don't know why more tripod companies don't do this. All they have to do is cut the, uh, the column in half and thread it. I mean, it's pretty simple to do. So it's a nice idea. So let me just uh, use this tripod right now. So it has a ball head. And uh, even with a ball head, you can uh, get it to pan uh, pretty easily, which is nice. Uh, a lot of ball heads, it's just when you release the ball, the horizontal uh, uh, goes uh, loose also. but. With this tripod, you can uh, get the uh, pan activity also, which I like. So Slick built this little uh, stop in here. When you press it, so when you take your plate, put it on here, you just press it down and it locks. Perfect. One suggestion I would have for Slick is uh, Many of these uh, plates come with a, a D-ring attached to the screw so you can tighten it by finger. Now my camera's pretty lightweight and I can tighten this by finger no problem. These plates are about 12 bucks each, which is reasonable. And uh, you know, I can still finger tighten it and it's adequate for what I'm doing. But uh, larger camera, you may want to tighten it down with a coin or a screwdriver, you know. Tripod comes up uh, just the lower part of my chest uh, in height, so it's not a real high tripod. But then again, it's real compact and real lightweight, so that's kind of nice. I mean, the main characteristic that I really like is that it's uh, very small and compact and I can take it with me. So those are uh, lightweight too. And uh, again, you have, uh, for cold weather, you have these rubber, uh, rubber grips on the side uh, and flip lock legs. It deploys quickly and, t you know, uh, folds up quickly also. So uh, something to consider. You know, I'm going to have several tripods and uh, this one is a good addition to my collection and uh, probably one of the tripods I'll use most when I'm out hiking just because it's so portable. Nice bald eagle here. It's hard to adjust the tripod to uh, you know, when you tighten the ball and all, everything tends to shift. Now this is the first bird I photograph with this tripod.